Hey there guys, and welcome to Kick Scammer News. I wanna take you for a ride. Ladies and gents, it is Kick Scammer News for the month of September 2019. My sort of monthly review on websites like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe, where I like to talk about the bad, the scummy, the weird, and sometimes the good. But guys, this last month on crowdfunding websites, there hasn't been that much good going on. Uh, so there's about a 90% bad ratio for this video, but you guys love it when it's like that. Yeah, in all honesty, it's been a bit of a slow month on, you know, these crowdfunding websites, but that's okay because it hasn't stopped the crazy people going on there to just come up with some of the weirdest stories that probably I have told up to this date. So strap yourself in, guys, because, well, we're going to get right to it after... This! So, Coin Master, that's a mobile game, and it's a mobile game where you get to own your own village. Well, actually quite a few, and recently I have become very addicted to it. The aim of the game is to build up and protect your own village whilst destroying everybody else's, and the quality thing is, if you link the game up to your Facebook and attack your ex-girlfriend and gift your wife, I'm sure you'll be plenty rewarded for doing so. Or, well, you know, you could switch those two around. You have pets that you can collect that boost your skills, like this one here that actually helps raid other villages. And you can collect cards which get you more prizes. The game is seriously blowing up, and if you want to be in for a chance on beating your friends or your ex-girlfriend or your wife, then if I were you, I would be getting installing this right now before it gets even bigger. Heck, the game is already officially the most downloaded game in the UK during 2019, and if you download it using only my link below, you can grab 300,000 coins and 53 slot spins. It's hard to work out exactly when this one began or ended. Uh, all I do know is it was at the beginning of the month because I did see it before it got removed. My usual go-to sources like the Wayback Machine and Google Cash are not showing anything on this one, but I was able to save a little bit just before it got taken down. A big thanks to Multi Dark Zen, who is a part of my Discord Kick Scammer army, for finding this one. So what is Engage Game Tech? Well, obviously it's a crowdfunding video. I mean, it has atmospheric dubstep music, right? So surely you should be filled with confidence, right? <laughs> Hang on a minute. Let's listen ever so slightly closer. Ah, it's the audio jungle jingle. <laughs> nice. But if I told you this isn't the worst part of the video, that actually comes in after the glitzy intro where we are introduced to the CEO of the company. Hey Thunder Funders, welcome to Engage Game Tech. My name is Trevor Henry and I'm the CEO and founder of this awesome soon to be platform. So what is Engage Game Tech? Well, we want to completely monetize everything you do in games. Yeah, I know, it still doesn't make too much sense on how they will actually monetize all of this. However, when you make your way to the website, it does indeed make a tad more sense, and honestly, it's nothing new. In short, the whole thing is a monetized platform where you sell or rent out in-game items that you win or purchase, as well as the ability to join into online matches that you can bet on regardless of your skill level. Obviously, this isn't going to work. The whole thing is still rather confusing, considering this guy doesn't even know which way to hold his bloody phone when filming. It doesn't fill me with much faith in the project at all. Oh, yes. Did I not mention that you actually need to join up to this one through one of their monthly pricing platforms to participate? <laughs> no wonder this one's gone. It's dreadful and absolutely disgraceful. If you're not winning, you're losing. And what does that mean? You're a loser. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Pet cone. Pet cone. Pet cone. Pet cone. Pet cone. Pet cone. <laughs> yes. This is the sixth campaign for this. And unsurprisingly, all of the previous ones have done pretty badly or have been cancelled. 
However, this one, actually that one looks like it's going to fail too. So what you're looking at is a bowl that stops all the stress that cats and dogs face when pushing and trying to get their food from the side of the bowl and instead it makes it all fall into the middle of the bowl. Perhaps you need to get better at marketing darling, not even Taylor Swift, Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres or President Obama can help you now. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, something a little different for this kick scammer news segment, something that isn't a campaign, but some actual news on Kickstarter themselves as a company. You see, on September the 12th, Kickstarter came under scrutiny as they ended up firing two people due to allegedly trying to organize a union. Now, I've got to say allegedly because Kickstarter themselves have downright refused this. However, it is worth making your way over to Clarissa Redwine's Twitter feed, not only to support her, but to read her side of the story, because she was one of the people that did get fired. There were reports of working really hard and exceeding expectations from both Clarissa and Taylor Moore, the other guy that got fired. However, none of that mattered when the talk of unionization hit the company. And even though Kickstarter themselves did offer a one-month severance package in exchange for signing a non-disclosure agreement, these guys deserve top marks for actually going ahead and refusing to do this. The whole thing is only going to get worse and worse and worse. Definitely more to come. So yes, I'm actually at this particular point in the video editing it and a new update has come out on this. Uh, so it's throwing the timeline of this video out a little bit, but you know, you want to hear an update and here it is. The actual CEO of Kickstarter themselves has come forward with a statement um, that they want to put out there for some reason. Uh, and it basically goes in to explain that they do not want to unionize. So that part is confirmed, but he does deny the firings of those two individuals were because of their unionization and uses an example of other people in the organize um, other people within the Kickstarter organization not being fired, even though they are also uh, wanting this union to go ahead. So um, yeah, it's obviously a double edged sword. You can you know, basically believe what you want from that. I know I am. Uh, <laughs> um, it just really doesn't shine Kickstarter in a good light at all. And I'm sure, uh, you know, Indiegogo and other crowdfunding websites will be looking closely and taking action. You may not be aware of the clash between Hong Kong and China that's going on right now, whilst Hong Kongers, as this campaign calls them, find themselves protesting against China, standing up for what they believe is right, demanding their rights and protecting their homeland. It's a pretty messed up situation that's been going on since early June of this year, and in a nutshell, for those that don't know, Hong Kong is basically protesting China's growing control over Hong Kong. Obviously it goes far deeper than that, but yeah, it's pretty messy as you would expect. And as certain parts of this protest end up basically turning into mob mentalities, as always is the way in these circumstances, people are getting hurt by people with opposing opinions. Regardless of who you support on either side of the fence, it's obvious that this is a very much upsetting time for everybody involved. Which is why someone's come along to try and make a quick buck out of you know, these people's tragedies. But, as you can see, this campaign has been blocked for privacy reasons. So here it is. Want to get yourself a little model of, again, as the campaign suggests, a Hong Konger with a gas mask on? Sure, perhaps you're on that side of the fence and want to support Hong Kong in this fight, giving some random person in Hong Kong anywhere between the equivalent of about $15 to $105 a pop. Which, in all honesty, 15 quid for a little, you know, figure uh, on the lower end isn't that bad. It does beg the question, how are they managing to actually pay for all of these little action figurey things at such a low cost? Ah, yes. They're outsourcing it to China. <laughs> You know what it's like, you get out of bed, you've got to bend down to put some socks on. Well, not anymore. Oh, no, no, no. The 
Bootledge is here. <laughs> yes, on September 14th, all of our worries were finally over because now we've got a nice little ledge that we wedge under the bed to basically take away unneeded stretching that we have to face every morning. And to be fair, you, the person that's taken a mickey out of this one, you're soon going to shut your face when you realise it's all the way up to $272, eh? <laughs> Not bad. Oh, of a $100,000 campaign. <laughs> yeah, they're probably not going to hit that. You should play You Push It because You Push It is the only gaming platform where you can have real world value at the same time you're just playing games. You Push It is the only mobile gaming platform where a virtual commodity, you gold, offers you real world value at first glance. It may seem complex, but it's actually quite simple. You play, you build, you bid, you win. It's as simple as that. I don't get it. However, looking closer, I am starting to. From what I can tell is that depending on how well you do on this platform, you win certificates. Certificates, that's the play part. Then the build part is down to how many of these certificates you actually build up. You can then auction these certificates off to other players or the actual people behind the platform, aka the people that actually gave you the certificates in the first place. That's the you bid part. And the you win part is well, that's the bit where you get some money. It's very, very complicated and not simple in the slightest. It sounds like a scam because it kind of is. Why? Well, besides the crappy platform, the campaign is also showing off this crappy mobile puzzle game that is actually already out and available on iOS. An absolute garbage looking game too, and the service that thankfully no one is back in. I mean, sure, it has 11 backers, but considering the majority of that funding is actually people putting down money to be sponsors in the game, I'm willing to bet that not only is this whole thing simply just a load of rubbish, but those big time investors that are not even talking in the comment section, yeah, they've got to be fake. But hey, maybe I'm all wrong and people are actually wanting to put down a crazy amount of money to play a game that looks like this. Okay, so here's a question. You know when you watch movies and TV shows and there's always that old school joke of the wife kicking off at the husband or the, the young boy because they've left the toilet seat up? Does that actually happen in the real world? That's never happened to me. No one's ever moaned at me because I've left the toilet seat up. Well, if you are one of these people that moans or gets moaned at regarding this, then perhaps the house broken jar is for you. Or, you know, you could just actually be with someone that makes you happy. Just the thought. So what is it? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a jar with a lid that slightly resembles a toilet seat, reminding people to keep the seat down. However, if you rock up to a toilet and the seat has been left up, you now apparently have the right to lift it up, revealing a sign that says that they now owe the jar one dollar. <laughs> See, I told you it was simple. It's obviously not going to hit its goal. Probably because it needs bloody 40 grand to succeed, meaning that they need to sell well over 2,300 of these things before it becomes a success. And so far, they've sold 14. <laughs> but guys, it's time to get serious. Like every time he goes to the bathroom, so like five to 25 times a day. Look, I'm no doctor, right? But if your husband is going to the toilet 25 times a day, you might want to get him to a doctor as quick as possible because a quick Google search shows us that he might have interstitial cystitis. It's a chemical bladder problem caused by inflammatory or irritation of the bladder wall. So stop moaning about your bloody toilet seat, you stuck up cow. Your husband's got some serious health issues, which, by the way, you might not have actually known about if he did put the toilet seat down. You ever thought about that?
On the 22nd of September, guys, the campaign owners behind the Atari VCS did not update their backers as they promised. This is the system that was a huge success on Indiegogo, even though pretty much every single gamer, big and small, predicted its failure. And it looks like that's definitely going to be the case, because to this day there really hasn't been an update showing off a proper prototype, even though they promised plenty of updates during the summer, which has now been and gone. And when one disgruntled backer actually went over to the official Atari subreddit to, you know, find out what's actually going on, the Atari VCS team actually responded. Hello, fear not. We certainly have something in the works. We did not specify it would be on September 22nd to 23rd. Sorry for the misunderstanding. We appreciate everyone's patience as we craft an exciting announcement to share with you all. As you would expect, this update was met with loads of people not believing a word that they said. I mean, heck, why would they? They ended up getting into a pissing match with these commenters and then they got removed as a moderator on the official Atari subreddit due to deleting anybody that said anything bad about the product. There is a nice register article that goes into way more detail regarding this, but the long and short of it can be summarized at the bottom of that particular article. <laughs> Atari has missed every single deadline it has ever set around the VCS console. It hasn't provided any updates for months despite repeat promises to do so. There is still no evidence that there is even a working prototype. The only man on the team with actual experience with building a games console is now the co-founder of another startup. Atari was booted off its own subreddit for deleting posts and comments it didn't like. Needless to say guys, when this whole thing does get to a semi-decent point, good or bad, you can be damn sure that there will be a kick scammer episode similar to the Vega Plus episode created. Now you may never have heard of this webcomic, and honestly neither had I, but if this seems appealing to you, then you're probably going to want to go and check it out. CuteLittleFuzzleHub.com <laughs> And I'm sure that sooner or later you're probably just going to want to turn these little characters into scare toys, yeah? Well, you're in luck because on the 24th of September a Kickstarter opened up where you was able to buy uh, plugs and blow those in the shapes of the characters in that webcomic. Now, to be fair, jokes aside, this campaign is doing rather well. It's aiming itself towards a wide variety of individuals, no matter your sexual preference. And any fan of the comic itself will understand that these characters are indeed gender affirming, which obviously has helped it actually get onto Kickstarter in the first place and do rather well. You see, if you actually go and type in toys onto Kickstarter, there really isn't much that comes up. You have the odd graphic novelty type thing or art book type thing, but besides literally just one other toy, which was more of an educational thing that actually didn't even get funded, this looks to be the first to ever reach its goal and it's already smashed it. Apparently the designer was in constant contact with Kickstarter regarding this one and due to the uniqueness and the message it's trying to put out there, Kickstarter have actually lifted their ban on yes. sex toy campaigns for this particular campaign alone. And even though this sort of thing doesn't really interest me, I mean, fair play to the guy to actually get something like this onto Kickstarter in the first place. The future is almost here. You've all seen those videos of airport luggage that follows you around, right? Well, screw that, because now you can actually sit on your luggage and look like a complete bell end driving it around. <laughs> Yes, on the 25th of September, this particular campaign went live and it skyrocketed past its $10,000 goal rather quickly. Now, to be fair, it's obvious what they're going for here, but one, this is obviously not going to work as well as the video showcases. You know, they never do. You know, please prove me wrong otherwise. And number two, if it does, not only are people going to be shouting at this guy to put some bloody socks on, you hippie. But more importantly, it's going to cause nothing but collisions and lawsuits. <laughs> that is a small part of me really wants this campaign to succeed. It's so ridiculous. I can just imagine a world where YouTube is full up of people on these little 
suitcase scooter things, accidentally smashing into old ladies at airports, and God knows what. It's a recipe for disaster, and um, I kind of want it to succeed. <laughs> Yes, guys, it's time for my recommendation of the month. There's been plenty of absolute garbage campaigns this month, but one that is really, really good is this book. As you know, I'm a big fan of sort of historic video game educational books like whoop, that one right there. Uh, and obviously my Nintendo Switch. I love me some Nintendo Switch. And you know, this book is looking to be very, very good. Now I have got to say guys for the record and I'm sure someone in the comments will for me. Uh, I have actually helped this guy out in the past and actually wrote a segment for one of his previous books. Uh, not for monetary reasons or anything like that. He was a fan of the show. He asked me to write a segment. I did. He sent me a copy of the book and it's fantastic. All I can say from personal experience is if you like Nintendo Switch and video game related books, then, you know, you can do a lot worse than going for this. This is the guy's ninth campaign, and I think it's pretty safe to say you're in very reliable hands, as every single one so far has been a success. And there you have it. These are my 10 stories for the month of September 2019 on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and GoFundMe. Now, guys, as usual, please do check the links below for any of the campaigns in this video where available. And if you want to give your suggestions, then please be part of my Kick Scammer Detective Agency on my Discord. And of course, I want to give a massive shout out to the shitty Kickstarters subreddit too, which is always great to look at, as they unknowingly help me with quite a few of these episodes. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons, of course. But an extra big special shout out goes to Gary Pinkett, that retro video gamer, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Haywood, Kevin King, Christopher Turnbull, Bill Lowlands, Roven Army, Ryan Holtz, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina Robertson Dunn, Lefty, Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Asobi, Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Comrade Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephant, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, King Link Reviews, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Dan Petit, Ye Old Hamburglar, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softail, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Sonix Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kingamo, Cut Tyndall, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Flo G, and of course, Petty Mew. And before we go ahead, guys, I've actually been asked a question by one of my patrons as part of my uh, Patreon QA. Um, this one comes from Cyber Shroom, and Cyber Shroom asks Hey, Dan. What would you include in a modern Sonic collection similar to how Mega Collection slash Gems did it? Now, it's going to surprise people. Um, I've always been fascinated by Sonic, uh, e even the bad games. Um, I don't necessarily like to play them. I just find them, you know, fascinating pieces of gaming history. And I would actually like to see a collection of some of the more lesser respected Sonic games. I want to see things like... Uh, well, actually, no, start with Sonic Adventure. And I, I know that's hated nowadays, but I adored Sonic Adventure. So Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, uh, I would like to see Sonic 4, Episode 1 and 2 in there. I'd want to see uh, Sonic and the Secret Rings, uh, Sonic and the Black Knight. And could you go as far as Sonic Lost World? It's only one generation old and it's still technically on Steam. So maybe that's going a bit too modern for a, 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 a Sonic collection. You've got to be realistic about these things. Um, and also, uh, uh, I want to see the Sonic Advance games on there. I mean, this is getting quite a hefty collection now, isn't it? Uh, and you know what would really be the big seller? It's a massive dream. It wouldn't matter what's on there. If they included a unfinished version of Sonic Extreme, even if they used the, you know, the, the fan uh, pulled together version from what they've got, the fans created version, then you know, that would be okay. You could put that on there. Um, it would score quite badly in the gameplay arena. I mean, some of those games are actually quite good. I had a lot of fun playing Black, uh, Sonic and the Black Knight and Secret Rings, although that's heavily outdated now. I had a lot of fun playing those games back in the day. Uh, Sonic Unleashed was pretty good for half of it, although that probably shouldn't be on this list. That should be on a future one with things like Generations and Colors and stuff like that, but whatever. Um... I just find those sort of that, that, that sort of grey area of Sonic quite interesting, and I think it would be quite nice to have it as a collection. Uh, obviously, the advanced games I actually think are brilliant. So, yeah, I 
want to see a nice collection like that. I think that would be pretty good. I think that would be pretty good. And also, why don't the fan community do this? A lot of, you know, there's all these incredible fan-created games out there that a lot of the, 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 the non-hardcore Sonic fans don't know about. So why are people not making a Sonic fan game gems collection? I mean, obviously not selling it, but having it as a nice download where you can have them all with a pretty menu. I mean, why are people doing that? Why are people doing that? Anyway, that's what I'd want to see. Weirdly enough, I'd like to see all the bad games in one on one disc. I would just find that very interesting. Anyway... Yes, uh, thank you very much, Cyberstream, for asking uh, asking that question. If you want to ask a question, um, get your name seen, get your name shown, come see what I'm working on, and all of the other stuff. Uh, be part of the Discord uh, uh, Kickstarter community that I have on there. By the way, massive shout out goes to Lobster Smashing on the Keyboard. You helped me out with a couple of the segments of this video. Then please do click the link that you see on the screen and become a Patreon of Slopes Game Room. It would be very appreciated. But yes, guys, uh, I suppose I'll end it there. I think it's probably enough plugging, isn't it? Yes. This is DJ Slope signing out, and hopefully I'll see you all next time. I don't pee 25 times a day.